Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and today I wanted to bring you guys a very special video showing off my very first flight using my new, brand new Thrustmaster Warthog Hotas. Now I just received it in the mail a few days ago and unfortunately life has been very busy and I'm only just now getting to do a first flight with it. I went, looked into the controls for the F-14, uh, I really like the default setup and I just modified it a little bit to make it a little bit easier for shooting videos and doing the different things that I like to do with the uh, Tomcat. And so we're going to go ahead and fly a mock strike mission today in single player just because I'm not fully 100% sure about all my controls. I've done a couple drills, so I know where 90% of things are, but I may have to open up the controls menu just to verify some things as we fly through here. So yeah, like I said, we're doing a training strike mission here in the Gulf of Oman. We're going to fly out um, into the mountains of Oman, uh, do some low level through the mountains, which should be very fun. And then we're going to go ahead and fly out uh, to Ras Al Kamaya Airport, where some Saudi F-15s are going to come on up to uh, engage us in a mock dogfight. And we're going to go ahead and hopefully we'll shoot them down. And then we'll continue on to our target and drop a couple laser guided bombs on uh, some tanks out there in the, in the Emirati Desert uh, on a range. So it should be a good uh, time. And, and we'll go ahead and hop in the cockpit and get started. So for our loadout today, we've got uh, two Sparrows and two Sidewinders, a Sparrow on our glove station, one in the tunnel behind our two GBU-10s, of course a Sparrow, or sorry, a Sidewinder on our right, and our Lantern Pod on our right glove station. So we're ready to go there. Uh, let's go ahead and do a sweep around the cockpit, make sure we're good to go. We've got some lights on, so that's always good. Tomcat cockpit can be a little bit dark, especially the Rio seat, that's for sure. Alrighty, things look good. We're going to go ahead and start unstowing our lantern pod just so that we have it ready to go for when we need it. We may even try and use it a little bit in the air-to-air -air mode to uh, get a good identification on those uh, F-15s as we fly out. So why don't we go ahead and do a control wipeout. I always love watching the turkey feathers move up and down and all around when I do a control wipeout in the F-14. All right, so that looks good. Now, first impressions, man. The Thrustmaster Warthog is a fantastic joystick. You know, I, I asked you guys for some, uh, you know, advice as to what uh, host has to get, and I ended up just going straight with the Thrustmaster Warthog just because I'm on the West Coast of the United States, and Amazon is king, and, man, Verpal and VKB are, are unfortunately not available on Amazon, and their ship dates are very, very long. So that's why we went with the Thrustmaster, and, uh, so far, it works great for me. So I also have included the the uh, afterburner detent here in the Tomcat, so that'll be my first time working with that. So we'll see how that goes. I'm interested to see whether or not I like it. Um, so we'll go ahead and take on off. We've got our wingy up there on Cat 2, and we're down here on the waist at Cat 3. You can see it's late in the Tomcat's uh, years here in 2005. We've got the Red Ripper's CAG skin and it should be a good time. So let's go ahead and take on off. Yeehaw! Flaps up, gear up. I'm gonna go ahead and put her in air to air mode. We'll make sure we don't break the hard deck on our climb out until we get a bit farther from the carrier. Friendly, E2, 6 o'clock, high, 6 miles. As you can hear from Jester there, we do in fact have AWACS support with us, which will be fantastic to have. Two, 
Go ahead and keep retrimming her out. Let's throw on some labels for us just to help us out a bit. And we can see our wingman coming up to meet us. Alright, we're far enough away from the carrier now that we can go ahead and climb on out. Oh, we got nails right on our six. Go ahead and set up our weapons so we don't have to worry about them later. Okay. Alrighty, so why don't we go ahead and turn in towards waypoint one and the start of our low level flight through the Omani Mountains. The Warthog stick just feels so, so much preci more precise than the old X-56 that I was using. There's absolutely no wobble or play in the stick at all. And the spring tension is stiff, but not too stiff. It's very, very nice. I feel like I'll be able to fly in formation and tank much, much easier using this stick than the old X-56. Now it's very important not to have any sloppiness in the stick, and that's actually one of the reasons why the Blue Angels on their sticks in their F-18s have a large spring that connects the front of the control stick to the control panel and gives the pilot about 40 pounds of nose down pressure on the stick. So flying a Blue Angels jet, you're constantly doing a 40 pound curl to keep the aircraft in straight and level flight. Now the reason for that is to take out any sloppiness whatsoever in the stick, which is especially important in a jet con like the F-18 that's controlled by an FCS. But it's very, very important to be as precise and perfect as possible in your stick movements, especially when you're in a loop with your canopy 12 inches away from the wingtips of your fellow aircraft in the diamond loop or something like that. It's also one of the reasons why there have been female Thunderbirds pilots, but no female F-18 pilots, F-18 pilots flying in the Blue Angels, it is because of that physical nature of having to do that 40 pound curl for the entire flight. Which as you can, as you know, would be very, very physically demanding. However, if you go on the Instagram of Megan Newman, who is a active duty Super Hornet pilot. I saw on her Instagram that uh, she is trying to rush for getting onto the Blue Angels, which is very, very cool. I hope she gets there. That'd be very neat. Alrighty, so we'll go ahead. Damn it, I keep doing that. I always go to Jester rather than the radio. <laughs> Beautiful like evening here to fly in the Persian Gulf. We see our low level route out here, so we're just kind of flying out for a nice lineup. We don't want to be get going too fast in our low level flight. Uh, Roger, switching to steer point two. I was kind of inspired to make this mission by some really old footage that I believe was from Operation Desert Shield of some Omani or 
British Jaguars flying low level through these mountains. It was very, very cool. And hopefully we can kind of get that feeling here today. All right, lantern pod's good to go. And of course, I'm sure most of you guys know that wart, that with the Warthog, rudder pedals are required because there is no Z-axis rudder in the Warthog. We're flying through low level. Gonna go ahead and make a ridge crossing. Let those big F-110 engines do what they do. Yeehaw! Pulling down hard. Rudder pedals to pull us back over. There we go, that was nice. That was a nice ridge cross, and probably the best one I've done in the Tomcat so far. Going pretty fast through these mountains. Definitely get a good sense of speed. Wow, this stick is just awesome. It just feels so smooth and so buttery compared to the wobbliness of that old X-56, man. Absolutely no comparison. This is just beautiful. Get rid of the stick on the jet so I can actually see my nav interface. Low level through here. Following this little road. <laughs> what a joy to fly, man. Having a little fun. When you're flying low level like this, I really don't recommend flying any faster than about 350 knots. You probably want to keep it probably around 325 to 350, just in case you have an issue where you need to really make a sharp turn and you really need to pull hard. because a nice cornering speed in the Tomcat is roughly 350 knots. Ooh, almost got in trouble there. Over the ridge line. Hey, the sink rate's too high. That's uh, nails, uh, two o'clock. All right, looks like we got our F-15s out here to play. AWAX doesn't seem to be answering. We'll go ahead and do it ourselves. Copy. Copy that. Switching to initial point. Uh, he's locking at 11 o'clock. Him. 
target, 22 miles. Roger, we'll go ahead and select our sparrows. Where's my buddy? Not seen him, that's all right. behind me. All right, we got a missile launch. Uh, we got a spike, six o'clock. All right, let's get him defensive. Looks like we got a missile launch. All right, switching to PSTT. Can you hear Jester putting out some chaff for me? We got two missiles in the air. Looks like I got a good Sparrow tracking. Whoa, that was close. Jesus Christ. There he is. We go VSL high. Alright, let's get him. Splash. Nice. Bandit is down. All right. Well, that worked. Two good splashes on two Saudi F-15s. All right, let's see, back to our navigation. Now let's go ahead and make sure we get to our second objective, which is of course dropping our laser guided bombs on some old rusted out uh, tanks here in the, Oma in the Emirati Desert, that is. I actually believe I'm over Oman at this point, if I looked at a map, but if I came back over towards uh, Roughly the the border seems to be about right here wrong that but large freeway Because I know that Ras al Kamaya is in fact in Emirati airspace But that is neither here nor there. There's my first dogfight with a warthog That wasn't bad at all. That certainly didn't suck towards where our next target should be. Wow. Ah, that's why I accidentally knocked the uh, Tomcat into bomb mode. There we go, now we can retrim her out, okay. Okay, what's next? Let's get the lantern pod up. to surface target. Alright. Okay, let's see here. What do we gotta do? Looks like we do have a vehicle in sight out there. We didn't arm our laser, so we gotta go ahead and go around. That's no problem. There's our wingman, perfect. Flight. Engage targets of opportunity. Oh yeah, he doesn't see him. That's alright. 
we designated that uh, tank so that if we lose him as we come around in our target run, we will be able to reacquire him easily using the S4 hat for the lantern. Hopefully we can drop our bombs and get back to the ship quickly so that uh, we have enough daylight left to make a nice case one. Yep, see, we just lost our target there. We got back to our designated point. Yep, looks like we still got that tank in our view, so we'll go ahead and come on around. Eight miles out. Yep, there we go. Back to designated. Wow. I just feel like I can fly so, so precisely with the Warthog compared to what I did in the past. It really is a night and day kind of difference. And the the buttons are quite, quite different. It, it, they do take some getting used to, I think. I really have to push buttons hard compared to what I had to do in the X-56 because of the fact that things are not you know, toy-like, I have to actually press and mash that button, which is important because it, it's a, it's modeled after a real flight stick. You don't want hair triggers everywhere on a real flight stick because you may accidentally bump something and you don't want to accidentally release a weapon before you're ready for it. Because that could cause a lot of very, very bad things to happen. All right, so we're coming back around. Make sure we keep an eye on that altitude. We don't want to get above 22,000 feet with our lantern pod on board. All right, coming back around towards our surface target. Okay, let me go ahead and throw in the autopilot just to be safe. Alright. Got our point locked. I'm going to come on in. And we're going to latch our laser. Let's see. And weapon away. Going to very, very gently roll the aircraft off to our left. Always come to your left so that we don't accidentally blind the pod. When we roll back out to straighten level. Adjust our zoom just a little bit. Impact is coming. Two, one, shack. Oh, nice, good shack. That looked really good. Perfect. To lower slewer back to designated. We should see a nice dead tank in there. Very cool flare effects on there in this twilight. It's very interesting because we got a very, very hot day today here in the Persian Gulf, as always. Alright, so we'll zoom it out and see if we can find Yeah, so that's not going to work. We're going to have to come around a little bit better. That's our dead tank, yep. He's burning. Burning pretty well. Now we're gonna come around a little bit more. 
Just testing the pod, see if it can start doing area track. As you guys know, the Lantern pod isn't the most advanced pod in DCS world, and definitely has its limitations compared to like the Lightning pod that's carried by the AV-8B Harrier. But it's fun to kind of work around those issues that it does have. In my opinion, anyway. Some people may, may be different on that. So we know there should be some other tanks in the area. If I could find them, that would be nice. Ah, uh, there's one. Perfect. Alright, my next victim. We'll go ahead and designate this point. Looks like we're gonna have to come around for another pass. Because we designated it, we are able to slew our pod back around and find that target very, very easily for the next pass, even if we lose our Yep. I can't tell if that's a Is that a T-55? Yeah, it's so pixelated. I can't. I know it's a tank, but I, I can't distinguish what type of tank it is. Maybe an M60, an old Emirati M60. I'm guessing it's either an M60 or a T55. Not that it really matters that much. So we'll set up for our next pass. A lantern pod is a lot of fun to use in the Tomcat, but you can see by, by my workload here that it's nice to have a second pair of eyeballs helping you out doing this stuff. You can see that little fire down there, so that's a good visual mark point for us. I didn't see that before. So we're kind of right over the target area. Alright, coming on around. All the nice little twitchy buttons and stuff made the lantern model. A little bit easier to use in the on the X56, but not nearly as satisfying or fun to use as here in the Warthog. It really feels like you're flying a real airplane with a real stick, which makes it a lot of fun. Okay, we're coming back around towards our ST. We should be lining up pretty soon here. There we go. Now we got our fine adjustment by, via our lantern pod. it with the laser one more time and just make sure we update our designation point just in case we lose the target with our pod and coming up on the drop point just under 400 knots perfect speed and we will go ahead and latch our laser and weapon away very gentle left hand turn Making sure we don't bump our pod away from the target. If we do, it's no problem. We'll use S4 hat to cue our previously designated target. T-55 
10 seconds, 5 seconds to impact. I think that's a T-55 based on that very round turret. And there you go. There is another very nice splash. Yeehaw. Alrighty, we are able to go ahead and clear the airspace now. Why don't we go ahead and stow our pod? We will safe up the jet. Go back into air-to-air -air mode for our flight home. And I believe we should be exiting through that area right there. Little port area here in uh Looks like he is joined up. So he's been on our wing basically the whole time. <laughs> Doing his thing. That's a cool screenshot. Let's go ahead and take that, baby. That's a very nice screenshot. Alright, perfect. <laughs> now we gotta recenter the track IR. Go ahead and manual fl manually fly her the rest of the way. Alrighty. That was fun. Oops. You bet. Switching to fixed point. Alrighty, here we go. Jet was good the whole way. No master cautions, no issues. Another very cool picture there, so we'll take some more screenshots. <laughs> Definitely getting time to head back towards the carrier as the sun starts getting a little low. Another cool picture right there. Wow. Very nice. Alright, 44 miles out. About to go feet wet. I believe the carrier is ILCS channel 1. Let's see. Yep. Power's on. Okay. And we will go ahead and head out to the carrier. Now that we are feet wet. Very, very nice flying <laughs> with the Warthog Hotas. That's for sure. Now I haven't flown the Hornet yet with the Hotas. Wow, another really awesome picture. Holy cow. <laughs> Perfect screenshot weather. Uh, now another thing about the Hotas that I'm a little bit worried about because I haven't flown the Hornet yet is the quality of the TDC button slash little mouse, mouse switch that's here on uh, the aircraft heading through for two are on the throttle here. It does definitely seem cheap. And I think that that may be 
an issue. I guess I can't tune the carrier with this for, with that radio. Okay. Good to know. All right, we'll just go. We'll hopefully be able to do a case one. Nineteen miles out. Yeah, I think we will. Should be no problem. Flight formation. Let's go trail. How's our fuel state? Fine on fuel. May even have to dump a little. Definitely had to rearrange my flying setup a bit when it comes to using the HOTAS, Warthog HOTAS, but uh, I think it's been for the better. It definitely does get a little, taking a little bit of getting used to with uh, this extra little table I put here for my mouse, because I have to be a little bit farther from the desk, but hopefully I'll get some desk mounts soon and that will help the issue. And there's the good old carrier. So we'll go ahead and just break the deck since we're the only aircraft out here. Getting a little dark, but it's all right. break alongside the carrier for probably the last case one of the day. Perfect. the audio feedback of the throttle and the Tomcat. I think every module in DCS should have that. It really, really helps with everything, <laughs> in my opinion. All right. Nice break across the carrier at 350 knots. There's the beautiful ship. There she is. I'm hungry. It's time for dinner. Gotta get down there and get some chow. Flaps out. Speed brake out. Start bringing the nose up. Trim. Still way too fast. Ah, uh, not the cleanest one in the world, but hey, this is my first carrier landing with a new <laughs> A new hotas, so gotta go at least a little easy on me there. 
Still too fast, shit. Looks like our ship isn't moving. That's kind of weird. It should be moving. I'll bring the speed brake in. <laughs> wow, what a terrible case one. Still way too fast, shit. I'm always going too fast in the Tomcat. What a terrible landing. Yay, one wire. It's just the Admiral waving over there. See him? <laughs> there we go. There's Jester making fun of me, of course. Yeah, that's definitely going to take some practice with this new stick. Uh, it just requires getting used to the new feeling. That is for sure. What a terrible, terrible landing. Almost a ramp strike. I'm very lucky. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, that is all she wrote. Thanks for watching, guys. And once again, thank you very much for your views and your patronage on Patreon. It definitely allowed me to get this very cool stick. And I'm very excited about it, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want me to make a review of the Warthog here in 2019, that would be fantastic. I know it is kind of an older product, but it'd still be cool to put out a new review. So if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments below, and I will do it. So if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, consider donating on Patreon and all that other stuff that YouTubers have to say. So thanks a lot, guys, and <laughs> fly safe and have fun. Hopefully you can make better landings than I just did. At least I'm alive. <laughs>